Have you ever had an electrical project where you're remodeling an existing facility and need to show some existing electrical loads in your load summaries? Well, this video will show you exactly step by step a couple ways that you can do that within Revit. So stay tuned. So I'm here in Revit 2024, and this is the parking level of the Snowden Towers electrical project that we started. And I have another video that shows how we designed and laid out this level of parking level that has elevators and some EV charging in it. So it had minimal equipment. And over here to the right, we have this utility room that we're using as our main electrical room. And so far, we've only put in a few branch panels. So for an example of dealing with existing loads, we are going to assume that this project is a remodel and we have some existing panels in the project that we would like to include in our main distribution board as existing loads. So how would we go about doing that? You'll notice that most Revit videos out there show you how to model new construction and not so much how to model existing construction. Now, there's a few different ways we can tackle this issue. But first, let's take a look at a real life example of an existing panel. If you're out on a job site and you take some photos of an existing panel, you can use those to help develop your existing circuits. So in this project here, we have a project that had a panel R4A and it was two sections. We're just gonna look at one section today. This happens to be a 48277 system. But if I go through these photos, these are typical job photos. This one is full of, pretty much full of 20 amp breakers. And we down here we have a 20 amp three pole and a bunch of 20 amp singles. But if we go down this whole panel, we've got a 15 here and we've got some more 20s. Now we happen to have some sub V lugs. We're gonna ignore those on this example. But again, this is pretty much 38, almost 38 circuits of 20 amp and some 15 amp circuits. Now, along with this, fortunately, we took a photo of the panel directory. We know what's on each circuit. So we've got some lights, we've got some mechanical units. So now, one way we can model this existing panel is as a whole. If all we need in our main distribution panel load summary is an existing load of miscellaneous, we can model this entire panel as one thing. Let me show you what I mean. So back into our project. First of all, we have not modeled the main distribution panel here. So let's do that very quickly. What I'm using here is my custom switchboard. Now you can use an out of the box switchboard if you prefer. And this one is set up for, I have two types. I have a 208 or 480. So I'll bring this in and I'm gonna rotate this so that it hits this diagonal. And we'll just put it right here for now. I can make this a physical size that I want, but for this example, I'm gonna just stay with this and let's just call this MDB, main distribution board right here, panel name, MDB. And we can tag it and we don't need a leader on this guy, MDB, there we go. My existing panel, we will say is not in this electrical room. Let's say that this existing panel is over in, in this area of the building here. But if I actually drag a panel board in, then it wants me to have circuits attached to it to give it a load. So what I really need is a single point load to act as a panel. So let's go down to our electrical fixtures and we'll just bring in an equipment connection. If I need this panel to show up in this plan, then I can draw something else over it, change its look. But if I really don't even need to see where the panel is, let's say and it's, it's in the building next door, I can model this out of the future clip region because I may be clipping this view down to one of these scope boxes. For example, this scope box is called grids and this other one right here is called levels. So I've got a couple scope boxes that I can crop this with. So I'm gonna move this panel outside the crop region Another way you can deal with existing loads and hide them is to use some filters. I can call this existing load and use some filters that turn off existing loads, but that's a little more complex. So right now I'm just gonna move them off out of range. So they're still in the model, but not visible. I'm gonna hit edit type, and then I need to duplicate this connection so that it is its own entity, so that I can change the type parameters of this duplicate. And let's just call this, existing 
panel R4A. Existing panel R4A is what it was. And the load classification for a panel is I can just call this existing load. I can call it existing load 30 day metered, existing load lighting. I'm just going to call this existing load because I'm going to estimate the load on this panel in this case. Now that's really a design decision, how you will account for this existing load. And many times you will have a 30 day meter on it. Other times you'll just take the existing load and a good engineering guess based on the breakers within it. And we'll take a look at that method. Existing load. And if you have a, in this case, I'm assuming 42 20 amp circuits. And if you figure a 50 or 60% loading of each circuit, which is pretty common, let's go with 60%. You do all the math and you end up with 42 circuits. Now divide that by three if we're looking at 20 amp breakers, right? So you divide by three. So we have 14 20 amp breakers per phase, which is how we figure out our amps, times 20 would be 280 amps. And then if you go with 60% of that, 0 0.6, 168 amps of existing load. So if we go 168 amps, and we're going to convert that to KVA. So 168 amps, let's put an equal. So we can do some math in here. Equals 168 amps times, and then the magic number for a 480 volt panel is 830 which is 277 times 3, or 480 times square root of 3. We have 139, 440 VA, 139 KVA, 480 volt, and it's a three-phase load. So we have to finish all of the parameters here. Now we can circuit it to MDB. So we can do that, and we can put a little arc there if we want, just to remind ourselves that we've connected this. So now what will show up if we make a panel schedule for MDB up here, create panel schedule, and just use the default switchboard template, now we have existing load, which was the load classification of that. Now we can change this to actually say existing panel R4A. Now you can keep your sizing in here if you want. I typically put sizing on my one line diagram, but we'll go ahead and leave it here. And this was a 400 amp feed. And it does the math again. And it shows us that it is 168 amps at 480 volt. So now we have that load into this main distribution board. And we can add our other panels, new panels, like normal. And it will add all those up. So that is one way to show an existing panel as a lump sum of a load. So if you're getting something out of this video, go ahead and please hit that thumbs up like below. And if you want to see lots more electrical only videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now back to the video. If you have a situation where we need to show a more detailed existing load, let's say we need circuit by circuit information in this existing panel. This is a situation now where we will have to model each individual circuit because let's put in an actual panel. We'll go up here to our panels, a panel board. I'm going to put a surface panel board in. Now, if this is a, if this is a hosted panel, then of course we need to find a wall for it. And out here, there's no walls. Now, so this might be a situation where I want to use a non-hosted panel. And in another video, I'll show how we can do that. But in this case, I'm just going to figure that the panel's here, and this is our existing panel. And I'm going to name it something like, put it, just put an E in parentheses, and we're going to call this R4B. Let's give it a different name. Existing panel, and this is an actual panel board that when we create a panel schedule with the default template, is a standard panel schedule circuit by circuit. And we can make this a little smaller. There we go. Now we need circuits. And in panel schedule in Revit, you can type a description, but you can't start putting in loads. I can't, I'm trying to type, I can't type a load in here like you would in Excel. The workaround to that is we actually have to create these individual circuits in our model, connect them to this panel. So that's kind of the trick in Revit is we have to do a little more work here. But as you'll see, it's not too bad once we get started. So let's go ahead and label that. So over here in our field of loads outside of the clip plane, we're going to start adding loads. 
Now, what should I use for loads? If I have existing receptacles, I could drag a receptacle in, but it's also hosted. So I want to keep using some kind of a equipment connection that is not hosted. That way I can just put them out here wherever I want. This happens to be a custom equipment connection that I show how to make this or how to make a motor connection in another video. Now, if you go to Load Autodesk Family and find their connectors, you'll find some connectors you can use, but they are hosted. They, they need to be attached to a, a wall or a piece of equipment. So what I would do is just recreate this connection for each of those up to 42 circuits. So if I just say create similar and put it here, what we need to do is duplicate this. So we can call this existing r4 b circuit 3 something like that just so it has its own name we can give it a lighting load classification it's single phase at 277 and it's going to be 60 percent of 20 or 12 amps so equals 12 times 277 there's our load say okay and then we want to connect this to our panel R4B. Let them know that this is lighting 109. And again, that's all off that photo we just looked at, lighting 109. And we can put an arc to remind ourselves that it's connected. And there we go. You can even put a tag on this, and we have a tag set up to show the panel and circuit. That's a custom tag that you can create. But you can do this for each one. And now let's take a look at what happened here. There we are, lighting 109. Now, it ended up being in circuit one because it puts things in the order it wants. So let's move this down. And for here, I'm going to go ahead and assign this a space or even a spare, spare 20 amp breaker. That will keep Revit from trying to keep filling in one. Now I also have this set up, and I show this in other videos how to set this up. If we go to Manage, MEP Settings, Electrical Settings, and it's under General. It's Circuit Sequence. We have it set up for odd then even. So it'll go down the left side of the panel board and then down the right side of the panel board. This is adjustable, but we have it set up for odd then even. So that means that it will continue down this way. So I actually want to do my circuiting in this order. So I need to do circuit five next. So if I go back to my parking level and look at my photo, circuit five is lights in 209 to 212. So I can do that. Just go back to my, let's duplicate this because I already have this set up for lighting. The reason I'm doing a duplicate type is so I can change the type parameters. Now, if I find that I have a number of lighting circuits that are all going to be figured out as the same load, I could just utilize this same type over and over. So I could do something like rename this to just call this existing lighting. And this can be repeated over and over. So this one, I can just connect to my panel r4b it remembers the last panel do an arc and now this one is connected to five so if i go into here in five now i need to type in what i had here lighting 209 to 212 so lighting 209 to 212 and it figures the same load so in this case i'm figuring the same load for each lighting circuit now if you actually knew the load on these you would need to have different types for these so we will just go down and do that for all of these lighting circuits and then when i get to circuit 15 i need to do a three pole connection as rh1 this is probably radiant heater rh1 and figure out a 60 percent load for that or whatever you want to use for your existing load so you would just do this for each circuit in this panel. And when you're done, you will have a complete panel schedule with all the loads broken down by load classification. I would name my radiant heater as a track. And that way I would have my complete panel. If I need to add new circuits, I would do that. Now, one thing I should note here is I really should have put on here something to indicate that it's existing. If I'm going to be showing new and existing. So what I can do here is just put the E in front of them. 
and then any new loads I would have, I would not have the E. Let me just show you here what happens when I do finally crop this off by going to scope box here on the right. It's not right now. If I say, let's use the levels scope box, it crops that out. Now you can still see these home runs. I can make sure that I'm cropping the annotations as well. There we go. So that crops the annotations as well. That's how you can show existing loads. And if you want to see how I made that non-hosted electrical equipment connection, take a look at this video that I have on the screen right now. Until next time.